Hi witches, welcome to the channel, thank you for watching. I'm Ren, the Cemetery Witch, and today we're going to be talking about banishing and binding. It's just a short introduction into these things so that you can have a better understanding of them for your magical practice. I decided I would talk about hexing and cursing within this video just so that you can understand exactly what they are and obviously they're about sending negative energy about. This video is actually about banishing and binding and how you can restrict or stop that kind of harm. So that is the focus but I thought we'd just go through some definitions of hexing and cursing as well as banishing and binding so that you can have a really good understanding of all of these topics and decide if any of them are things that you need to add to your magical practice. So grab a cup of tea, maybe a notepad, you can always watch me on repeat, but get comfy and we'll get straight into the video. Hi everyone, so I thought I would talk about hexing and cursing as part of this video on banishing and binding. And my reason for this is a lot of people, especially beginners, get these terms mixed up and they don't fully understand what they all mean. So I think to better understand banishing and binding, which are about restricting harmful energy and activity, I think we need to just look at hexing and cursing first, which is obviously sending that negative energy out. So I'm just gonna explain the difference between the two words. It's very, very slight. And then after we've done that, then we're putting hexing and cursing to bed. So the modern day word curse comes from an old English word curse, but it doesn't have the E. And that means a prayer that causes harm. We also have a word cursing, and this isn't used much in modern language, but it means to swear profusely. And no doubt this word cursing has had an influence on the modern day word curse. There is also the German word hexer, which means to practice sorcery or witchcraft. So we have these words curse and hex. In many ways, they're the same thing. A curse is a verbal pronouncement of ill luck, or ill fortune or bad luck, and this is made effective by some supernatural action or power. To hex is to practice sorcery or witchcraft or put a malign spell on someone. And the word hex can be used interchangeably with bewitch, chant and charm. And quite simply, a curse, for simplicity's sake, we're gonna break it down to a curse being the words, and the hex being the action that backs up the curse. So that's just a really, really brief explanation of hexing and cursing. We're gonna go on to the ethics of these in just a moment. So most witches, and I think it's fair for me to say this and speak on behalf of witches, most witches will avoid hexing and cursing. Now, obviously that doesn't go for everyone. There are witches out there that will hex and curse, but the vast majority tend to avoid it. That has been my experience. And the reason for this is we understand that our energy is not separate to others. We are all interconnected, all energy is interconnected. So we think very, very carefully about our actions and about the consequences of our actions. We engage in banishing and binding generally as an absolute last resort. It is seen by many as negative magic. That is because it is having an impact on someone else's behaviour and someone else's free will. People should be free to do whatever they want to do. That said, banishing and binding rituals and works of magic are generally done when there is a serious threat of harm. So if there is going to be serious harm, if nothing is done, then this is when we might engage. And sometimes we need to take a really long, hard look and think about whether this is the right thing to do. So for example, I once waited eight years to carry out an act of magic because I wasn't completely comfortable with the idea. I wasn't completely sure that it was the right thing to do. And I did not want to have to commit to doing this sort of magic unless I was really, really sure. So I waited an extremely long time to do it. But at the end of the day, it was about reducing harm to that person, to the people around them. And it got to the point where it was a no brainer and it was the right thing to do. 
So banishing and bindings can be performed with loving energy for the good of all. And hopefully there will be some sort of closure or healing at the end of this. So although they are thought of by many as negative magic, and although that witches are often loathe to go there, when they are done, it is because there is good, you know, in as the goal in sight. So yeah, we think really, really carefully and this is probably a really good time for you to think about your ethics as a witch. What are you prepared to do? What are you not prepared to do? What are you comfortable with? What are you not comfortable with? Where do your morals and your values and your standards lie? So to banish something is to send it away, to move it away from you, perhaps even to send it back to its original source. So I want you to think about the word banish. You could look it up in the dictionary. You could put it into some sentences. They don't have to be magical at all, but I want you to get a feel for the energy of banishing, what banishing is. Banishing is used a lot in witchcraft. It could be simply clearing something of negative energy. There are banishing rites and rituals. So the first one that comes to mind is the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, for example, which is carried out before magical workings within certain magical groups. You might banish um, entities or people, or you could banish an idea or a concept or something that's troubling you. You could banish a bad habit. You could banish an addiction. There are lots of ways to do this. So I've just got a couple of examples of the way that you can banish something. I should probably do another video on actual banishing spells, banishing rites, but I just wanted to give you a couple of ideas so that you could start to get your head around banishing and how you would use this in magic. So one thing I like to do is something called walk away your troubles. So you could write something on the sole of your heel of your shoes in chalk and as you walk away, as you walk around, slowly the chalk gets rubbed away, it disappears. So you banish that idea. So I'm trying to think of an example. So you could banish a habit. So write that habit on the bottom of your shoes and decide, make that mental connection, that mental picture, feel it or you know on every level that once that that writing has been rubbed off your shoes, that problem has gone away. So walk away your troubles cord cutting rituals. So if you are wanting to banish perhaps an ex, someone that keeps bothering you that you consider is out of your life, or you know somebody who's got a bit of an obsession, or maybe you've even got a bad habit that you want to get rid of, then a cord cutting ritual is perfect for you. So on, on a basic note, you get two candles, one represents you, one re represents the thing that you're banishing. So let's say uh, an addiction to alcohol, you tie a red thread between them, which represents the energetic attachment between the two things, between you and the other thing or the other person. And then you light both candles and as they burn down, the red bit of string catches fire and eventually that, that cord is severed. So that is a wonderfully easily wonderfully easy way to banish something like that. So I'll do a cord cutting ritual video at some point, but this video is just to introduce you to these concepts so that you can get your head around them. So binding is slightly different. You're restricting or limiting the actions or energy of a person, a situation, a feeling or a behaviour. So you might want to bind your own feelings of jealousy. If you feel that you are jealous about a situation and it's causing harm, you could do a spell to bind those feelings of yours. Or you could bind someone else, you could bind them so that they stop doing a particular thing, something that is causing harm. Again, this is seen as sort of slightly negative magic and you would not want to be using this magic to do something harmful. The idea is to prevent harm. So the first and most obvious spell that springs to mind here is some sort of paper poppet spell where you create a paper gingerbread shaped man and you fold in the arms and legs and the head and then bind with string to represent that person not being able to approach you, not being able to carry out harmful actions, not be able to think or speak 
anything that's harmful so you know the hands they carry out actions we would bind them in the legs that would stop them from coming near you because you're binding those in and the head again those thoughts and actions and perhaps saying things that aren't very nice causing trouble so with all of these processes you want to think very carefully about doing them You want to make sure that you're not feeling overtly emotional. You want to be able to be objective about these things. You you want to be able to take a step back from them. So you need to keep your emotions in check and only perform these if they're absolutely necessary. It's important to remember that the person that you are binding, for example, we use that as an example, that person is most likely a victim. People only tend to act out when they are experiencing pain or fear or perhaps because they've been brought up a particular way and they don't know any better. So it is helpful to do these things in love and to keep that love in your heart while you consider the situation. So you want to be empathetic You want to be kind and you want to think about this very, very carefully and you want to ultimately bind that person in love. So not only are you binding them in love to stop them from harming others, but you want to stop them from harming themselves because ultimately these acts of harm towards other people are acts of harm towards themselves. So hopefully now you know the difference between hexing and cursing, banishing and binding. You'll know that curse, a curse or cursing is a verbal pronouncement of ill fortune or bad luck and that hexing is the actions that sort of backs up the curse or it is simply practicing witchcraft or sorcery. Hopefully you understand that these are negative magic and they're probably not something you want to engage in. However, hopefully you'll also understand at the end of this video that it is entirely up to you. Your morals and values and standards are your own and that is your decision to make. Hopefully you understand the energetic differences between banishing and binding. These videos are not meant to completely educate you. They are to give you a basic understanding and to encourage you, hopefully, and inspire you to go and do some more research. There'll be scores of books on these subjects that go into much, much greater depth. But hopefully now you understand that banishing is meant to just send something away from you, keep it away from you, maybe even send it back to source. And binding is to restrict the activities or energies of something or someone so as to prevent harm. This is protective magic that we're talking about here. So I hope you really, really enjoyed that. Please hit the subscribe button if you did. I've got loads of videos coming up. I've been filming a series about casting a magic circle, explaining how to do that, and then taking you step by step. And there are lots of other lighthearted videos as well as the Witching Week on the Friday, which is just really informal. And it's just us all getting together and having a cup of tea and discussing the the latest sort of witchy events and the seasons and the, the will of the year. So until then, take care of yourself and each other and I'm sending you lots of love and blessings. Until then, goodbye.